New York voters will be voting in the gubernatorial election this November. That's right, this November. It's an election year. Candidates so far include former state Senator Terry Gibson, Assembly Minority Leader Brian Kolb, and former Erie County Executive Joel Giambra. And my first guest this evening, Libertarian candidate Larry Sharp. Sharp announced his campaign last summer. His campaign, campaign promises to include reforming education to better train students for the workforce, reducing property taxes, and restructuring taxes to help farmers just to name a few. Sharp joins me now in the studio to discuss his campaign. Larry, thank you very much for your time. Mm, absolutely. Glad so to be here. What would you say, so first of all, just tell us a little bit about your background, why you feel like you should be the person to kind of carry forward, forward the libertarian message uh, yeah. in this gubernatorial election. It's not just a libertarian message. It's actually what should be a new New York message, right? I'm a, I'm a poor kid from the Bronx, uh, broken family, uh, father passed when I was 11. Mother was an immigrant. She was caught up in the drug war. She was a convicted felon. I had to come back from my days in the Marine Corps. I was a, a vet for seven years. I had to come back and help her, get her back on her feet. Uh, seeing that struggle that we all go through, seeing that struggle that so many New Yorkers are still going through, this is something that we have, we have to change New York from a culture of, look, it's about punishment, punishment to, no, it's not about punishment and bribery. It's about how can we facilitate people growing. And I want to I want to make us a state of second chances. I want to make us a state where people don't want to flee anymore. They want to stay and come and thrive. And that is not going to work with the old ways. That's just not going to work with the aristocracy that we have now. OK, I do want to ask you about a number of policy proposals that you have out there. Sure. Some of the stuff that we've seen in the news lately. But I do want to ask you also just this is something that a lot of third party or independent party uh, candidates get asked. Do you expect to hit that 50,000 vote? threshold in order for the Libertarian Party to get ballot access in the next election cycle. That's in my rearview mirror. Look, my base right now is the Gary Johnson Bill Weld voters in New York State. It's about 175,000 voters, give or take. Those are people who said, I'm done with the old parties. I'm done and I'm going to try something else. That's my base right now. And I already have endorsements from Gary Johnson and from Bill Weld already. So that's where I'm working from. So 50,000 is in my rearview mirror. If I can just triple that in the next 11 months, now just tripling, that's doable. That's a mountain that can be climbed. Just that will get me over 10% of the vote. Remember, there's about 18 million New Yorkers, give or take, but only about four or five million ever vote. This is going to be a non-presidential election. We have so very low turnout in our elections. 30%, 40% slow. So maybe only four million are actually going to vote. I break 10%, I've, I've, I've affected the election. Right. Now here's the problem that people don't realize. Look, right now, the scandals that are all around Cuomo, any of them hit, I'm the governor. Why? In a statewide election right now, this state is far too blue for any Republican to win, period. That's why you, they can't find someone to run because there's no one who wants to run. They know they're going to lose. They, they will find a sacrificial lamb, throw him up front, he'll lose. So running as a Republican means you're going to lose. It's a wasted vote. That is a wasted vote in a statewide election. Reigns Libertarian, slim chance, but it exists. I actually have a chance. Right now, there are only two people who can become governor, me or Cuomo. A year from now, it's me or Cuomo. That's it, no matter who the Republicans put up, no matter who the Greens put up. Okay, so let's talk about some policies here. One of the Please. biggest issue uh, that came out of the governor's state of the state was taxes, this uh, mm -hmm. issue that he says is really affecting New York, and that's the capping of state and local tax deductions at $10,000. Sure. The governor wants to replace the personal income tax with potentially a payroll tax. What do you think of that? Well, a couple things. The first thing is the governor spent his time, a lot of his time, lamenting on you know, we have to worry about what's really happened in New York, accept some hard truths about New York, the problems about New York. What he failed to mention is he's been governor for seven years. He's been in charge for seven years. So everything he was lamenting about was on his watch. It's up to him. So he's lamenting, well, why didn't he fix it? He lamented about people in prison. Why didn't he pardon them? He lamented about the drug war. Why hasn't he ended it? He lamented about so many things he hasn't changed, he hasn't fixed, he's done nothing about. And worse, taken no responsibility. I'll take responsibility. So what would His you idea, do? I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. Sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. His idea of, of changing from state income tax or reducing it and then change to a payroll tax is simply a shift in taxation. Unacceptable. I don't want to shift in taxation. I want to lower and or eliminate taxes. I want to make New York State a place where people want to come. 
The governor's idea is always the same. Bribe, bribe, bribe. Get people to come to New York, bribe them, then things don't work anymore and they leave and we're stuck with the bill. Our budget right now is about $150 billion. We have less people than Florida and their budget is about $80 billion. We have a double the budget, yet less people. We need to reduce spending. That's the critical aspect. We have a pension bomb that's sitting there. 14% of our budget, a pension bomb. Didn't talk about that at all. We've got, we've got a huge amount of issues with Medicaid. Didn't bring that up at all. We deal with the pension bomb and Medicaid. We can do one of the most radical things, which will help the state tremendously, and that is, instead of worrying about shifting that tax burden, ending the state income tax. We end the state income tax. Companies will come here because by default, they've just given their people a raise. So where does the state get money from then? Does the state need revenue from the PIT or from a payroll tax or some sort of tax in order to function? Uh, uh, look, I'm not saying get rid of every single tax. I'm saying get rid of the state income tax. That's give or take $45 billion a year, depending upon what year in that area, right? Yeah. Now that's a lot, but Medicaid's $39 billion. The pension bomb is $21 billion. There are many ways we can raise funds. Not just that, look at the MTA, look at the bridges. We're spending our time, literally, naming bridges after our aristocracy, the family Cuomo, right? We're naming it after that instead of doing something like selling naming rights for that bridge to raise money for the state so we don't have to have tolls. You wanna give the, the middle class a better chance at survival? How about cutting down tolls? They're driving every day. So, so things like that is what I want. I don't want to shift the burden to payroll so that businesses don't want to come to New York. We need more business in New York, not less. Speaking of transit and transportation and the MTA, is sure. there a libertarian solution to the troubles that we're seeing right now yes. with New York City transportation, with the subways, yes. with everything that's going on with the MTA? What would you do? There are two critical pieces that, again, no one is talking about. The first one is New York State is famous for creating agencies or groups that have no one who controls them right? Like the Board of Regents, like the MTA, that's kind of run by the state, but kind of by the city, but kind of has New Jersey, but kind of well, doesn't. the idea is that no one has, you know, overarching influence here and they can, there's Which no, it, there's no, 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 no. for. That's what they that's, say. That's what the they reality say. is so that no one can be responsible, so that the leaders can lament and not take, the buck stops nowhere. That's what that actually is for. That will stop. We have to make it to where this is under one branch of the government. It's either run by the chief justice, run by the, by the governor, run by someone. So someone's in charge of it. That's number one. So that's the first piece. But the second piece is, look, all monopolies are bad. Most people would agree with that. Monopoly is bad. A government monopoly is no better. And right now what we have in the MTA is a government monopoly. Why aren't we adding other options to get in to New York City and around? Why aren't we thinking even bigger? Why aren't we thinking, what is the, what I'm calling the one state project, that new Erie Canal, that new way of getting us from Buffalo to Rochester, Syracuse to Albany, down to New York and out to the Hamptons? Why aren't we thinking big like that? Why aren't we talking about getting people to want to come here and do those types of things? Would that be a, a, a structure or a system that is privately run by, by something in the private sector would be set up? And what, would their, and what would their incentive be? Because sometimes... Private sector companies come in, they take a look at what's available or what's feasible, and they think to themselves, well, we can't really turn a profit here. All the time they think that, and here's what our answer has been. Let us bribe you. We did it in Buffalo. We've done it. I mean, how many times to say that we've done this already? Here, let's give you something, and then when the incentives go away, you walk away, and we're stuck with the bill. How many times have we spent millions of dollars in advertising, millions of dollars in advertising to get people to show up and no actual jobs pop up? That's been the way. My way's a different way. My way is I use the bully pulpit as the governor to speak the way I'm speaking to you now, to get people excited to want to do this. But not just that, to get the local colleges to be removed from the Board of Regents and instead allow them to simply create whatever degrees they want to create. All of a sudden now I'm talking about it. What are these people going to get? The company that comes to New York State when I'm the governor gets me talking about them. That's millions of dollars in advertising they don't have to spend with not one taxpayer dollar. But not just that. When they get the roads, we can name the roads after. If it's a Google road that has uh, driverless cars next to the interstate, and you can either take the driverless car road or the interstate, whichever you like, that road will have a Google name on it. That's what they will get. What they want now more than anything is eyeballs on their company. We can do that without spending taxpayer dollars. And on top of that, that innovation, that makes people want to come here. They'll want to be here. We are almost out of time. I do want to get you on one quick thing. What would you say, and give me your elevator pitch, uh, is the biggest issue facing upstate New York right now, and what would you do? Yes, the biggest issue is that we, first off, we don't connect. 
upstate and downstate don't connect well enough and they should. The beauty of New York is upstate New York. That's the beauty. We have to make sure we retain that beauty. Part of that is making sure we lower taxes so people want to stay, but more than that, increasing opportunity. And a last piece on the side, which hurts every poor person out there, is stop using law enforcement as a profit center. When we stop those three pieces, stopping the drug war, lowering taxes, opening up innovation, and letting our colleges do the right thing for people around us, not focusing just on, hey, put your 12 years in school and then put four more in school. Instead, hey, let's get the education that makes sense for you. Now people want to be here. Opportunity is the key. New York must no longer be a state of punishment and bribery. It must be a state of opportunity and growth. Okay, Larry, we'll have to leave it there. I want to thank you very much for your time, and good luck out there. Appreciate it. Good seeing you.